Good morning and welcome to the Gospel Loft this morning. We are still in the first Peter, the letter that Peter has written first and we're coming to the 13th part. Now, in our last study we found Peter speaking against our modern concept of womanhood. Now, the Bible in general does not preach egalitarianism and is therefore not the ideal literature for woke liberalism. Yet, if we listen to the debates on the internet, we can clearly see a great gulf beginning to form between the traditional and the liberal woman. And I must say that the liberals are losing ground. The challenge is nevertheless not to the woman exclusively given, but equally to the men. And this is our next portion of study. And I would like to read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Our first subtitle then, Likewise ye husbands. Now the text is very short, but not limited. All that is put onto the wife is put onto the husband too. The key word we get from Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Well, I've mentioned this verse many times already. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. And he that loveth his wife loveth himself. Well, it's quite a mouthful. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the Church. Paul makes up where Peter comes short. The commandment is simply but demanding. Just love your wife. But then comes the how a man is to love his wife. The apostle draws a parallel to Christ and the Church. Jesus loves, or Jesus' love for the Church, is the measuring rod of the kind of love we are talking about. The love of Christ for the church is immeasurable. The demand is already almost impossible to meet. Jesus gave himself for the church. And you, dear husband, should have the same commitment to your wife. You need to be prepared to give your life for her. And the question is, are you? Remember what we said earlier of Adam and Elijah and Jacob and Abraham, how cowardly they behaved. We as men are also responsible to present our wives without spot and wrinkle. Paul then takes it a step further and says that a man should love his wife as much as he loves his own body. And then we carry on, dwell with them according to knowledge. One translation says, treat your wife with understanding. The wife is not a piece of meat at your disposal. She has a soul and a spirit and is made in the image of God as much as the man, as they are one flesh. We need to understand that in marriage we are one unit, yet still different in function and calling. We as men need to understand that the woman needs to be respected for who she is. Get to know your wife. That is the heading, get to know her. You may be surprised what you may find or discover and how much she makes up in what and where you are coming short. She is your additional complement. This lack of knowing the other person is one of the roots of strife and finally of the wars. It is when the authority of the man turns to egoistic and narcissistic ambitions that things fall apart in the marriage. 
Hatred does not mean tyranny or autocratic rule, but showing love and grace. Well, then Peter goes on and he says, giving honor to your wife means that we men ought to give honor where honor is deserved. We give honor to womanhood, which is described as such in biblical terms and not to womanhood that the world has produced and presents to us. When a woman is worthy to be compared with the church, that has no spot or wrinkle, we cannot withhold honor. There is, of course, no such woman to be found, and, well, therefore, love and grace has to be shown. If a woman understands her place in Christ and in the family and acts accordingly, we are compelled to treat her as being more valuable than silver and gold. Yet it always works both ways. It is not a one-sided affair. Peter adds still one more unpleasant principle to the mix, as he said, as onto the weaker vessel. Why do we have women's sport and men's sport? It is because even the world has enough understanding of biology to admit that a woman in a natural sense is made physically not as strong as the man. Yet I know that there are women who have trained hard and have taken testosterone supplements to build muscle. I'm convinced that some will definitely be able to overpower many of the male species. But, but the majority of the women, they are physically weaker than men. Therefore, we have a protective role towards our wives. Yes. They might shout loud from behind the protection of our backs, but they are still hiding there. Women are not just weaker in the flesh, but also weaker in temptation. Let us look at the one convincing scripture in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 14. There it says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The devil went for the weaker vessel and got his way. We cannot go into the whole psychological makeup of a woman and why and how she differs on that soulish level for lack of time. We, we need to stress nevertheless that when it comes to the spirit, she is as the man, either born again to spiritual life or condemned to eternal death. On that level, we all are the same. Now, as and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Here we have the confirmation, equally in salvation by grace. Yes, God knows what he's doing, to keep everything on an even keel. There is always a hurdle to be overcome. The word that sticks out is together. People tend to live their own life and, and the together is totally missing. When you see them together, it is an exercise of duty and not unity in marriage. They even attend the same church. Well, for an hour. Or he even preaches for 30 minutes. Uh, they have different bedrooms, different routines, different views, different everything, and will end up in different departments of a lost eternity. And all because they do not want to yield to God's rule and will. How sad, really. How different. It could be if both give in to the Lord's requirements. We are destined to be joined heirs with Christ by grace that promised eternal life. Why miss it? Now, Peter goes on and he says that your prayers be not hindered. Peter gives a perfect reason for all this and the key to the, our biggest problem is unanswered prayer. We pray and then we refuse to hear what God is saying. When he says, sort out your marriage, love your wife, dwell peacefully with her, take some of the blame, repent of your sins. Now, I would like to apply the scripture in Second Chronicle, um, chapter 7 and verse 14 to the situation. I, I, I've amended a couple of words. If you, that is, I put in husband, who is called by my name shall humble yourself, and pray, 
seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins and heal your marriage. Now, the scripture can be applied to every situation when things go wrong. Prayers go through the filter of the word of God. Now, in James chapter 4, verse 3, it says, You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. Well, we must remember that our prayers are an open book. They are heard because we speak them out. This applies spiritually also. The, the spiritual world is listening in, and the opposition as well. We, we have this example in Daniel chapter 10, where the answer to prayer was delayed because of spiritual opposition. The answer, nevertheless, came through after 21 days. Yeah, 21 days of battle. Yes. Some, some, sometimes the answer or the answers are not even dispatched because of our own misbehavior. Like in the situation described by Peter, how can we receive an answer to prayer when we are deaf to the word of God and fail in the things that are clearly given to us that we should obey them? The answers to prayers are often conditional. And the question is, are we prepared to fulfill the conditions? If the condition to receive answers to our prayer is to get our marriage right, then we have here a valuable instruction from Peter. And we should not delay nor hesitate to conform to the commandment of God. Let us show more love, more grace, more tolerance, more understanding towards our spouses. And I mean on both parts, men and women. Well, until this far. And until next time, God bless you. Now, if you think this could help someone, pass it on. Yes, put, press the little forward button. Because the gospel needs to be spread all over the world. Until then, God bless. Amen.